In this video, we are going to discuss about the class based views. Before that, we need to create some data. As we know that we don't have much records to be inserted here. So what I'm planning to do now, I'm going to create another model called product category, which is the foreign key to this product. So already I prepared the class here instead of, I don't want to waste your time to be written this. So here it is the product category, models dot model, category name, category ID. These are the two columns. And the main column is the category name, okay? And models dot care field and max length is equal to 30. So we are going to create a foreign key column here. Say that category underscore name and models dot and foreign key. Then we can add the uh, here the details. Okay, so on delete is equal to okay, the cascade on delete is equal to models dot cascade, right? So we can add, but before that we need to add some details here, right? We need to add the field name. So what is the field name which we can give your product category? This is the foreign key, right? So we can give and any other informations we can add. I am just going with you can add relative name if you want to add relative name also and uh, so I'm just adding the relative name. Related name is equal to something like your uh, product category. So same name I am just giving. If you want to change it, you can change it also. I am going to execute the make migrations and migrate commands. So make migrations and migrate both are completed. Now I'm going to run the server. If I have any doubts on this, uh, already I created the videos on the Django playlist. You just go and have a look into it okay so we have product and product category and uh, we have just created the migration and tables are created and uh, the foreign key is also added now i'm going to add uh, some products and product categories because we need some data so that's why we are doing all these steps to work on to the view next step is adding the uh, the new model to the admin screen the new model name is called the product category and uh, register the same. And we can do with the decorator also. I'm just using the admin.site.register and uh, product category. Okay, this is done. Now you see that I added uh, one string overridden method because uh, otherwise we will see that different text into the admin screen. So let me show you that I already added the some data here like product categories and products the products I added and you see that there are some products which I added before that I added the categories the charger speaker headphones mobile phones and all and because we need some data to explore uh, with respect to the views and everything right that's why i added i created the model and uh, we migrated and after that we added the data now we are going to create a view this is the class based view to get the data from the database so for what how we deal with this we use the function based views these are nothing but api views Now I'm going to create a class. It is a class based view which I'm going to create. Say that class product are like we can say list products. This I'm just giving into the uppercase letter list products. And we need to use the a class name called we have to inherit the super class. 
okay so what is the class name so basically this is there in the, the rest framework rest framework dot views and import the view name is like api view okay this api view which we are going to use it into the a super class position here right now once we added this so this is like class based view we don't need to any decorators here so when you're using the function based api views we need a api view decorator but here we don't need but we need uh, existing class called api view so what is the next step which we are going to do it so when you are going to work on this class based views we need to specify the very simple there is a get and post method so let me create a spam function here called okay get which is the instance method for this class so this instance method is always the first parameter is the self and the next parameter is the request okay now so what we can do right we need to get the data so already we have the product product dot objects dot all this query which i'm going to take okay this means that we are already having the products data which we are getting through see we are doing very simple here this view is trying to retrieve the all the data from the table right and uh, that data we are serializing it in similar fashion we are also getting the data from the uh, table here that's called product that data only we are going to serialize so same thing which we are going to do it there is no change serializer class and product serializer because same serializer only we are using it here there is no change you can see here uh, you can easily compare the code uh, then you can understand much better way so this is a function based view this is a class based view so this class based views we are using the get also post and put and delete okay like that we have the methods we can use it now the query is equal to this and serializer class this one and the response is also same thing there is no any change here this is just displaying the data okay going forward we'll see the CRUD operations here create data and delete data update data but right now we are listing the products okay now this is we are done but this is the class based views this must be called from the uh, some urls right so i'll go to this urls and uh, we need to write okay from and uh, what is the okay product okay so i'm just going to use your product dot views and we need to import the class here the class name called okay so what is the class name which we created list products so we can uh, use this list products here just add one more entry path and the uh, name here okay so this is the product list okay basically this is the class product list i'm going to mention here class product list and after this what we can say that okay this class name which we need to take list products dot as underscore view so which is uh, we need to mention here and the name is equal to your name is equal to so in this list product which is there right this name i will give it to you and this one i will say that list of products so simple i'm changing different name you can give any name is fine but these names must be uh, different okay so this is how we created here right so we have the urls we have views and there is a models we already have and also like serializer is already there so in this serializer what i'm going to do right i'm going to remove this so uh, like this specific fields i want to display all the fields in the api so let me go to the uh, check that okay and i'm going to refresh the page here you see that all the data which i can see right including the description if you want ex description excluding also we can do it that we'll see it later so we we have all the data now right so what i'm going to do right uh, so this is not the url which i am looking at now so just enter the products we have the class product list this is the url name which you can enter here and just we'll see so 
class product list when i'm going to say that i it did not match anything the issue is because of uh, there is a forward slash is missing in the url path name so we are going to the visible studio code and fix that see there is a slash is missing here just you save it uh, i'm going to refresh here now you can see the data right so we need to be very careful with the forward slash uh, so sometimes we may get that issue so don't forget to add it in the views now you can see the data here uh, all the list of uh, products are there but i don't want to print all the products i want to print a specific product information here then how we can do it this is a list of products right if i go to the programming and uh, you see that this is a list of products we are we are calling all function so that means that all the products we are displaying i want to specific product should be displayed from the url so how we can do it i'm going to create a new view called class and we can say that git type okay or we can say like this product detailed view and of course this is also inherit the api view and you just enter i'm going to take the same uh, function here that is called get and self request and everything but you just uh, we want very specific thing right so i'm going to pass something called product id or you can say that pid so instead of all function i will use the filter function here and uh, the pid it should uh, check the condition from the database what is the column name here the product underscore id you can go to the views you specify here the product underscore id which should match with this pid or not and uh, let's go to the urls and we need to specify here the name so i'm going to enter here all these products and the name okay so just enter it is the detail right what is the name which i given let me check yeah product detail so i want to check this product detail view this product detail view only which i am going to take uh, here so adding the new entry path and this is the class uh, detailed uh, view uh, detailed product Okay, we can say something like this. So let me put everything in the lower cases. I don't want to make it like this. Yeah, class detailed product, and of course forward slash. And the next parameter is your so product details view dot as view. This is a function, and we can take name is equal to. Then this is a detailed product. Okay, so which I added. This is done. But remember, in the view, we are expecting the one parameter that's called URL dispatcher. We need to pass the parameter. Anyway, I already explained about URL dispatchers in the Django tutorials. I'll give you the uh, video link in the video uh, description. In this video description, you can have a look into it. So now, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to pass this PID. So the parameters we need to url dispatchers parameters we need to mention like this int colon and this is the pid so if it is a string str colon pid ui ui colon and respective names we need to provide like this so what i'm going to do right this is done right so i'm going to verify this this is working or not let me go back to this okay i don't want to be in the class product list you just enter we created the class detailed product here and uh, you specify it and after that you don't know what to enter if i enter one you don't see anything you can go to this uh, there is a product name called headphones which is uh, uh, sony closed dynamic headphones so i'm going to give this product id is 9786 so let me see this if i can get the data so still if i'm not getting the data means there is some issue is there we have to go to the look into the issue the issue is because of <laughs> I added actually this uh, int PID here. Uh, that's something mistake which I did. 
that should be added here in the detail okay because this function only it is expecting right this function only we need to uh, pass the like PID so anyway so I am going back to this uh, web page and enter and uh, you see that there is no any data so what uh, went wrong here so I entered the 8786 and there is no data again there is uh, some issue we are using the PID PID check let me go back to the URLs we are passing the PID okay maybe that data which is an empty so let me go back to check another ID okay just click on the products go to the apple and you give this time is a 234 and we will validate now okay so now I am going to enter here and you see that there is a 2345 data which is there and we will see that why the previous issue we got go to the products I mean 9876 maybe I am not copied correct number there is a white space what might be yeah we are getting now 9876 as well so if you want specific product information then this is the way like we can get it so what exactly we done we pass the argument uh, in the views so there is a filter function we are using it